see the stochastic processes model 7 brownian motion and its properties lecture 1 definition and properties in the last uh, six modules we started with the review of probability as a one model then the second model we discussed the definition of stochastic process and its properties and in the third model we have discussed the stationary process and its uh, all the properties fourth model we have discussed the the discrete time marco chain and in the fifth model we have discussed the continuous time marco chain in the sixth model we have discussed the martingale and this is a seventh model that is brownian motion and its properties in this lecture in this uh, model we are planning to discuss the important stochastic process that is a uh, brownian motion and then later we are going to discuss uh, the process are uh, derived from the brownian motion then we are going to discuss uh, the stochastic calculus and followed by that we are going to discuss the uh, stochastic differential equation and uh, eto integrals and the application of uh, the brownian motion stochastic calculus that is in the financial mathematics so we are going to discuss uh, the applications of brownian motions as the in the financial mathematics so with that uh, the module 7 will be complete and this is the lecture one of uh, this is the lecture one of uh, module 7 brownian motion and its application in this lecture we are going to discuss the, the random walk and the definition of brownian motion then how one can derive the brownian motion using a random walk and some important properties of brownian motions also will be discussed the long studied model known as a brownian motion is named after the english botanist robert brown in 1827, Brown described the unusual motion exhibited by a small particle that is totally immersed in a liquid or gas. It is introduced to model the price movements of stocks and commodities. A formal mathematical description of Brownian motion and its properties was first given by the great mathematician Norbert Weiner beginning in 1980. Therefore, the Brownian motion is also called it as Weiner process. Now we started with the random walk because using this random walk we are going to derive the Brownian motion. Consider a trial whose outcomes are success with the probability p or failure with the probability 1 minus. Repeat the trial infinitely many times that is equivalent of saying tossing a fair going infinitely many times. The success outcomes are denoted by the sample w that consists of a w1 w2 w3 where each one is the outcome in the nth trial that means a w1 could be head dot tail similarly w2 could be head dot tail and so on for example we have given h t t or t h t and so on so this collection is the this this all the possible w's that is going to be the 
sample space. Now we are defining the random variable xj. It takes the value 1 if the outcome of the jth trial is head. If the outcome of the jth trial is tail, then the value is defined for xj is minor. So, this is a real valued function. And this will be a random variable. Since it takes a value 1 or minus 1, this is a discrete random variable. And one can find what is the probability mass function for the random variable xj. So, since the trial whose outcomes are success with the probability p, success is nothing but heading a head, and the failure is nothing but a trial land up with the tail. Therefore, the probability of xj is equal to 1, that probability is a, call it the wj is equal to head, that call it as a success. Therefore, this probability is p. And the probability of xj is equal to minus 1, that is 1 minus p. And this you can denote it by q, therefore p plus q is equal to 1. You can denote a 1 minus p as a q, hence a p plus q equal to 1. Now we are defining the sequence of other random variables, that is, started with s0 is equal to 0, we are defining sum of first k random variables as a sk, where k is running from 1, 2 and so on. Here, xi's are iid random variables. And the sequence of random variables xk, that is a random box, with the s0 is equal to 0 and the sk's are nothing but the first k xi random variables. You can see the sample path of the random walk. Suppose uh, w1 is a tail, therefore, uh, it takes a value x1 is minus 1. Again, if uh, suppose uh, w2 is t, then x2 also takes a value minus 1. Suppose x3 is also t, then x3 also takes minus 1. Therefore, sk will be initially it is 0 then s1 will be x1 that is minus 1, s2 will be x1 plus x2 that is minus 1 plus minus 1 that is minus 2. So, s2 is minus 2, s3 will be s2 plus x3 that is a, again adding minus 1. So, s3 will be minus 1 like that uh, it can take the different values. So, here this is a one sample path with w1 is equal to t and w2 is equal to t and w3 is equal to t and so on with the probability p is equal to 0 0.045. This is the probability of success or probability of uh, getting a head when you toss a coin. So, we are going to conclude later as a k tends to infinity using central limit theorem one can conclude this will be a Brownian motion. For that you should understand how the SKs are created where SKs are the sample part, where SKs are the random ball. Now we are going to see the properties of random ball. If you choose non-negative integers K0, K1 and so on, then if you find the difference, difference, the difference is nothing but a sum of a x i s in this range. Since x i s are iid random variables, if you take a non overlapping intervals or the increments of s i s, then that will be mutually independent because a each these increments will be nothing but the sum of a few xi's and we know that each xi's are mutually independent iid random variables therefore non overlapping increments will be a 
mutually independent random variables. Hence, Sense has the property called the independent increment property. The increments are independent. Independent. Similarly, for 0 less than or equal to i less than or equal to j, si minus sj is identically distributed with s j plus h minus s i plus h for h belonging to natural numbers. Hence, the stochastic process Sn has a stationary increment property. That means, if you find out the n dimensional random variable and shifted by h find out the another n dimensional random variable, if though the joint distributions are same for both the n dimensional random variable without shifting and with shifting, then that stochastic process is called a stationary. But here the stochastic process is not a stationary, the increments are stationary. That means that if you have a increments and you shifted the increment by some interval h, then the distributions are going to be identical. That is what it shows for 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to k less than l, the difference the distributions are going to be same as long as the length is same. So, it is uh, the increments are uh, time invariants, not the actual stochastic process. Therefore, this stochastic process has the stationary increment also. So, therefore, the random walk has uh, increments are uh, stationary as well as independent. Also, one can find a mean and variance of increments. The increments are nothing but uh, the difference of those random variables. And since each random variable or uh, discrete type random variable with the probability mass function that is discussed in the previous slide, so we can find out the mean and variance uh, of those random variables. Therefore, we can find out the mean and variance of uh, increments also. Now we are going to derive the Brownian motion using random walk. Consider a particle performs a random walk such that in a small interval of time of duration delta t, the displacement of the particle to the right or to the left is also a small magnitude delta x. Whenever a particle performs a random walk in a very small interval of time delta t, the displacement of a particle to the right or to the left that magnitude is delta x. Now, we are defining a random variable s of t denotes the total dis displacement of the particle. In time t, let x j denote the length of the jth step taken by the particle in a small interval of time delta t with the probability mass function. So, the probability of x j takes the displacement of the particle to the right side that is delta x with the probability p with the left side that is x j takes the value minus delta x that is 1 minus p that is nothing but a q where p plus q is equal to 1 where p is independent of x as well as time that is very important. The probability of uh, the displacement to the right or to the left uh, that probability whether p or 1 minus p which is independent of x as well as time. Now, the partition of the interval of length t into n equal sub intervals of delta x. And then n times delta t becomes t and the total displacement s t is the sum of n iid random variables x j. The way we partition the interval 0 to t into n equal parts, therefore, the s of t, the total displacement is nothing but the sum of n iid random variables x j's. 
where n is nothing but n of t because you are partitioning the interval n uh, sorry you are partitioning the time interval 0 to t the length t into n parts therefore n is nothing but n of function of t that is nothing but t divided by delta t. So, you know the mean and variance therefore you can find out the mean and variance of uh, s of t also because uh, st is the sum of n iid random variable sales g. Expectation is a linear operator therefore n since it is iid random variable n times expectation of any one random variable whereas variance since the random variables are independent then the variance of s of t is nothing but uh, variance of sum of random variables. So, you can take it out and you can do the simplification. Now, you can make a delta x tends to 0 as well as delta t tends to 0, therefore you will get a limit. By using the simple calculation, the delta x is this much where p and q is equal to half times 1 plus mu times this and 1 minus mu times divided by delta. Now we are using the central limit theorem. Let x1, x2 be a sequence of independent identically distributed random variables with the finite mean mu and the finite non-zero variance sigma square and let Sn be a sum of one first n random variables, then Sn minus the mean of this random variable divided by the standard deviation of this random variable convergence in distribution to the normal distributed random variable with the mean 0 variance. So, we are going to use this central limit theorem for our random walk scenario and for large n the n of t is equal to n where n is very large you can conclude the s t converges in distribution to the mean of this random variable s of t that is mu times t and the variance of this random variable is sigma square t. Whereas here we have used the central limit theorem the random variable minus their mean divided by the standard deviation converges to the standard norm. But here we are saying the s of t converges to the normally distributed random variable with the mean mu times t and the variance is sigma square t that is different from this mu and sigma square where mu is discussed here and the sigma is discussed here. Since t represents the length of the interval of a time during which is which is a displacement, therefore, instead of s of t, you can go for s of t minus s of s. Since it is a t is a length of the interval, therefore, you can go for the s of t minus s of s. That will converge just to the normal distribution with the mean mu times t minus s and the variance sigma square times t minus s where s is less than the way we discuss the properties of uh, random walk it has the increments it the incre uh, it has the property of uh, incre increments are stationary as well as independent the same logic can be used here so here the increments s of s minus s of 0 are mutually independent increments are independent also. Now we are defining the Brownian motion or Weiner process. A stochastic process is said to be a Weiner process or Brownian motion if it satisfies these three conditions. For t greater than 0, the sample paths of wt are almost surely continuous functions. 
for the interval 0 to Tn in this form, for all n, the increments are independent as well as stationary. The increments are independent random variables as well as stationary. And every increment has normal distribution with the mean mu times t minus s and variance sigma square t minus s. This is what we have concluded in the limiting case of normal distribution. The increments is normally distributed with the mean this much and the variance this much. So, this is what we have given as the conditions of a, a stochastic process will be a Weiner process. A stochastic a Weiner process Wt with the mu of 0 is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0 and sigma square is equal to 1 is called the standard Weiner process. Whenever it is normally distributed with the mean 0 and the variance t minus s, that means the sigma square will be treated as 1 and the mu will be treated as 0, also w0 is equal to 0, then it is a standard Brownian motion or standard Wiener process. So, any stochastic process satisfying these three conditions will be a Wiener process or Brownian The sample path of linear process it looks like this. By definition, Wt plus S minus Wt that is uh, the increment follows normal distribution. It can take a positive and negative values. The sample path of Wt is a continuous there is no jumps and the limiting case of a random walk will be the Brownian motion that also can one can visualize in the sample path of Brownian motion. Now, we are going to discuss the few important properties of a Brownian motion. The first important property is a nowhere differential. You can see the sample path of a Brownian motion. If you see the sample path of the Brownian motion, it is a continuous function. But it has a too many fluctuations at every point. So, this is a one sample path. So, the first property says uh, the sample path is a uh, not a differentiable anywhere or it is a nowhere differentiable. It is not possible to define a tangent line at any point in the sample. You can see it in the sample path figure also. Using second order moment convergence of random variable, we find the limit delta t tends to 0, the variance of the difference of this random variable divided by delta t, if you find out this limit, if this limit is a finite, then we can conclude it is differentiable at the point t naught. Suppose you have a real valued function f of x and if you want to conclude the real valued function f of x is a has a derivative at the point uh, x naught, then you should find out limit uh, delta t tends to 0 f of uh, t naught plus delta t minus f of t naught divided by delta t. If this limit is a finite, then you can conclude the real valued function f as a limit at t naught. Since uh, the w's are the random variables and we know the mean and variance and also the distribution and the difference is going to be a random variable as a delta t tends to 0 it is going to be a, we should find out the convergence of this difference of random variable divided by delta. So, one can use a, any mode of convergence to conclude to find out the limit delta t tends to 0 of a, this quantity. But here we are using the second order moment convergence 
therefore we are finding limit delta t tends to 0 variance of this random variable the difference is a random variable difference divided by delta t is a random variable so we are finding what is the convergence of the function of random variable via second order moment of convergence so if you find out uh, this quantity since uh, this difference has a normal distribution with the mean 0 and the variance delta t therefore the variance delta t has to be treated as a constant so the variance of uh, 1 divided by constant times this will be 1 divided by delta t whole square and the variance of the difference of this random variable is delta t therefore you will get uh, infinity as a delta t tends to 0 since this limit is equal to infinity we conclude the sample path is not differentiable at t naught since t naught is arbitrary time point therefore it is a nowhere differentiable or it is a the sample path is not differentiable at every point every time The second important property that is a strict sense stationary increment. We are not saying the given stochastic process Brownian motion is a strict sense stationary. Here we are saying the increments are strict sense. The increments are strict sense stationary. That means uh, the increments are satisfying the time invariant property the strict sense stationary means uh, it has the time invariant property in the distribution so for that we are finding the covariance function you know the definition of covariance so covariance of s comma t it is a land up it is going to be yes the covariance of s comma t is equal to minimum of s comma t because here we have concluded for s is less than t it is yes if you make it uh, t is less than or equal to s yes, uh, we will get t hence c of s comma t is minimum of s comma t therefore vanier process is uh, not wide sense stationary whereas uh, we can conclude it is a strict sense stationary increments that means uh, first you find out the increments then you uh, one can prove for any finite dimensional the joint distribution is same as the joint distribution by shifting the time scale h for every h the increments satisfying the condition the joint distribution are same the original joint distribution as well as the incremented by h therefore it is going to be a strict sense stationary and the using the co covariance function we are concluding it is not a white sense station. The next property is a self similarity property. Let me give the definition of self similarity, then we conclude vernier process is a 1 by 2 self similar. What is the definition of self similar? A stochastic process is said to be h self similar for some h greater than 0. If each finite dimensional random vector satisfying the condition for every t greater than 0, any choice of t i's for i is equal to 1 to n, the joint distribution for n dimension random variable at the time points t1, t2, tn multiplied by t times h for every t and h is the h self similar for some h greater than 0 if that distribution is same as x of the time point is multiplied by t without h in the whole right hand side so if the joint distribution t times h1 for the random variable x t times t2 for the second random variable and so on if this joint distribution is same as the joint distribution of this form then we say it is a h self similar for some h 
for every t greater than 0. One can verify the linear process is the 0.5 self summed. Here I have not given the proof, but you can multiply for some t for h is 0.5, you can conclude the linear process is the 0.5 self sum. The next property that is very important one that is Marco property. You know the definition of Marco property. So, this is the definition of a Marco property. If any stochastic process satisfies the Marco property for arbitrary time point t naught to t n which is less than t, if this condition is satisfied, then the stochastic process will be a Marco process. So, here from the definition one can conclude w of t plus s minus w of s is independent of past or alternatively if you know w s equal to x naught then no further knowledge of the value w of tau where tau is less than s has any effect on the knowledge of a probability law governing w t plus s minus w s the whole time scale the w of t plus s minus w s which is independent of the whole past history and if you know the information at the s depends only at the time point s not the whole past history. from the definition you can make out because the definition says the increments are the increments are independent Therefore, the W of T plus S minus W S is independent of the whole past, in, past information from 0 to S. That is what it says. Therefore, given W T, the future W of T plus H for any H greater than 0 only depends on the future increment W of T plus H minus W T. And this future is independent of past. Hence, uh, this Marco property is satisfied. Since Marco property is satisfied for all arbitrary time points t naught to t n, therefore, this stochastic process is called a Marco process. So, hence, the Brownian motion is a Marco process. The next one is a Gaussian process. First, let me define what is Gaussian process, then I am going to relate the Gaussian process with the Brownian motion. The stochastic process is called a Gaussian process if the distribution of each finite dimensional random vector is a multivariate Gaussian distributed. That means if you have a stochastic process, and if you take a any finite dimensional random vector from that stochastic process, if that finite dimensional random vector is a multivariate Gaussian distributed random vector, then the underlying stochastic process is a Gaussian process. Since for each finite dimensional random vector is a multivariate, you can write down the joint probability density function of n dimensional random vector of Gaussian process that is nothing but uh, this is a joint probability density function that is 1 divided by 2 power pi power n by 2. You find out the determinant of the matrix and after that you find out the square root then exponential of this one, where mu can be written as the vector and the elements are nothing but the expectations and this notation sum is a covariance matrix covariance matrix covariance between any two random variables x of t i's with x of t j's where each one is running from 1 to n therefore it is the 
square matrix and the elements are nothing but the covariance between any two random variables and all the diagonals will be the variance of a x of ti's where i is running from one to it and it will be a symmetric matrix because a covariance of a x of ti comma x of tj is same as covariance of x of tj comma x of ti therefore this matrix is a symmetric matrix and the diagonal elements are a variance of x of ti's so one can find out the covariance of any two random variable using this formula since the wt is a markov process as well as gaussian process you can write down the conditional ct the conditional cdf is same as the difference divided is less than or equal to x minus xn but since this is normally distributed wt minus w of xn is a normally distributed therefore this is nothing but minus infinity to x minus xn and this is a probability density function of a normally distributed random variable with mean 0 and the variance t minus t whenever we discuss whenever we discuss the brownian motion we are discussing a standard brownian motion with the wt is equal to w0 is equal to 0 and mu is equal to 0 and sigma square is 1 now we can discuss the kolmogorov equation for the brownian motion we know that the brownian motion is the markov process with the continuous time and the continuous state space we can write down what is the transition probability density so the probability transition probability density p will be probability that wt is lies between x to x plus delta x tx given that w is equal to x naught we make the following assumptions for any delta greater than 0 the probability of absolute wt minus ws which is greater than delta given that ws equal to x that is the order of t minus s in other words the small changes occurs during small interval of intervals of time that is the meaning of the above equation now we can find out the conditional expectation of w t plus delta t minus w t given w t is equal to x divided by delta t as limit delta t tends to 0 that is nothing but you can note down as the denoted as the a of t comma x this will be a function of t comma x that is denoted as the a of t comma x similarly you can make out the conditional expectation of the whole square given that wt is equal to x that you can denote it as the b of t comma x in other words the limit of infinitesimal mean of variance of the increment wt exists and is equal to b of t comma x which is known as the diffusion coefficient so a markov process wt is satisfying the above conditions is known as a diffusion process and the partial differential equation satisfied by its transition probability transition probability density function is known as a diffusion equation the partial differential equation satisfied by its transition probability density function is known as a diffusion equation so this is the diffusion equation this is a pde for the transition probability density function p and where a and b are earlier defined this equation is also known as a forward kolmogorov equation and also known as a fokker planck equation and this equation is possible because of uh, the wt is a markov process therefore 
and also it is a Gaussian process therefore we will end up the transition probability density function P and satisfying the PDE and this PDE is called the Fokker Planck equation. If you solve PDE which is given here for the standard Brownian motion or the standard means W0 is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0 and sigma square is 1 in the definition of a Brownian motion. Then you will get uh, the transition probability density function P is uh, 1 divided by square root of uh, 2 times pi t exp exponential of minus x square by 2 times t. And this is the probability density function of a standard normal distributed random variable with the mean 0 and the variance t. And the corresponding diffusion equation is a dou p by dou t is equal to 1 by 2 dou square p by dou x square. Now we are going to discuss the joint distribution of a linear process. The way we discuss the Gaussian process, because in the Gaussian process, every finite dimensional random vector is a multivariate random, multivariate normally distributed random variable. Therefore, you can find out the joint distribution of W of T1 with the W of T2. We know that W of T1 and W of T2 minus W of T1 are independent. Here we made T1 is less than T2. And also we know that W of T1 is normally distributed with the mean 0 variance T1. And this difference is also normally distributed with the mean 0 and the variance T2 minus T1. And both are independent. Our interest is to find out the joint distribution of W of T1 with W of T2, but for that first we find out the joint distribution of W of T1 with W of T2 minus W of T1, then use the function of a function, function of a random variables rule, then you can find out the joint distribution of these two. So, first we, so that is the way here I have not given the derivation. So, Finally, you will get the joint distribution of joint probability density function of W of T1 with W of T2 is in this form where the probability density function is going to be the normally distributed random variable. Hence, the joint distribution will be 1 divided by square root of 1 divided by 2 pi times square root of T1 times T2 minus T1 exponential of this expression. Note that, uh, note that uh, w, w of T1 and W of T2 are not independent whereas uh, W of T1 with W of uh, T2 minus W of T1 are independent random variables. So, using that uh, we are finding the joint distribution of uh, W of T1 with the W of T2. Once you know the joint distribution for any two random variables the same way you can find out the joint distribution of any n random variables in the vernier process also in the same way i have not given the derivation here and we can find out the joint distribution joint probability density function of n random variables also and we need a covariance matrix and a expectation so, the expectation vector that is mean, therefore all the means are 0, whereas the covariance, already we got the covariance of any two random variables of W of T1 with W of uh, W of Ti's with the W of Tj's, it will be a symmetric matrix and the diagonals are nothing but the variance of W. Yes. We can go for the multidimensional Brownian motion. We can have a W1 is a Brownian motion, W2 is another Brownian motion. So, you can collect it as a, make it as another WT and each W is a one dimensional Brownian motion and you can go for 
the stochastic processes are independent therefore you will have a n dimensional brownian motion also here is the reference so in this lecture we have discussed uh, the definition of uh, brownian motion and also we discussed uh, the derivation of brownian motion and we have discussed uh, important properties of uh, brownian motion starting from uh, stationary increment increments are independent marco property martingale property and uh, and also finally we discuss the, the multidimensional brownian motion